before I say anything further for the video, I want to apologize if you hear any background noise at all because it's most likely just my dogs playing in the backyard of my house and uh, they can be pretty loud because they like to play rough, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, what we're talking about is this week's episode from My Hero Academia and I wasn't sure what they were going to do. I wasn't sure what they were going to show, but I obviously had the idea that they were basically just going to do like the whole like muscular portion from the manga uh, after Deku had left UA to go and basically try to intercept Shigaraki and all for one before they try to attack him. And that's basically the whole plan that he had created after talking with the previous uh, vestiges, the previous wielders of one for all. He basically had to go ahead and just abandon all of his friends to work with a select few heroes, which was Endeavor, Best Genus, and Hawks, and then All Might as well. He also uh, joins in as well. Basically, everybody that knows what One for All actually is, besides, you know, after Deku like told his entire class what it was, um, which I like that he did. But I really liked Deku in this episode though, because it really shows off just how much he's had to completely change. Deku is not the same character as he was that we knew him for, uh, I think this is season 6, right? He is not the same character that we've known for 5 seasons, and then plus like a season, uh, or, or half a season with season 6. He is a completely different person. The way that he talks, his mannerisms, uh, everything about him is just a completely different person. He still has the same goals, he's still trying to sh strive for the the goal that he's had since the very beginning but now it's just for the sake of doing it himself uh, or rather he's doing the, he's doing what he's always been trying to do but now he's actually trying to put it into fruition which is basically being what all might was which he was a symbol of peace and he was able to take down any villain by himself deku is essentially trying to do the exact the exact same thing now uh, by abandoning those who would try to help him because he desperately doesn't want people around him to get hurt for his sake anymore. Which is why he, he told them his entire class uh, what his power was, what his quirk was, and then he left the high school, right? And uh, his mom now knows in the episode because they told her what was going on and he had to basically abandon his mom as well to go and just try to take down the big baddie by himself. He's trying to do everything on his own, and I think that's what's eventually going to have to happen later on. He's eventually going to have to have to learn that he doesn't have to do this completely by himself. Ultimately, he is the villain's goal. That's you know that there are they are trying to go after him, but he doesn't have to do this completely by himself. He can rely on other people if he really desperately needs to. He doesn't have to do it by himself just because he has all these miraculous quirks like uh, danger sense and black whip and float and. Uh, being able to do high pressurized attacks and move really fast and all, all those other crazy BS, you know. But what I really liked in this episode especially is that they continue on further with showing some other students from some of the other hero high schools. They're now participating in what little they can do and they're trying to help civilians evacuate from, you know civilized areas and city streets to go to you know one of the hero high schools because that's where it's safest that's where they're going to be the most protected that's where they're supposed to be at but a lot of them don't want to go because of the distrust of heroes you know the people in the society can't trust the heroes anymore and i really appreciate that they show off more of that but I like how they also show that just because they can't trust them, it doesn't mean that they don't want anything bad to happen to them as well. Because uh, Yo Shindo, he was at the provisional licensing exams a couple of seasons ago, um, and he ends up fighting against Muscular, who was you know one of the bad guys who broke out of Tartarus, and you know he gets pretty badly injured, right? And Deku has to go in to save him. But even though they don't trust. You know, the heroes, they don't want anything bad to happen to him as well. So after Muscular is, you know, incapacitated and captured and he's now being taken to police custody, they go and they try to help him, you know, try to give him some form of medical attention that they can of, or basically what they can offer. They don't want things to bad, bad happen to, to the few remaining heroes who are around, but they still can't completely trust them. But after this and seeing how hard they tried to protect the civilians who are still left around this particular area, 
They're willing to hear him out, and they th- and I really like that. But I really like how this episode really shows the progression of where Deku currently is in terms of uh, in terms of power, really. Uh, like not only is he just a completely different character in terms of his personality and and how he acts, but I also really like how they showed off the progression on where he is currently with his power. Because before, when he fought muscular, and I think it was season three, yeah, it was in season three, uh, he basically had to go and pull out all the stops and go full 100% to even try to stop muscular. That, because that's how d- different there was in terms of a in terms of a power gap there was between Deku and muscular. This episode pretty much just shows off completely that Deku is is completely changed. Not only is he a lot more uh, smarter in terms of battle IQ, but now that he has all these quirk uh, quirks at his disposal because of all or, uh, one for all, and uh, he only uses forty five percent of a uh, of a Detroit Smash, a one for all full Cal and Detroit Smash, only forty five percent, and he takes out he takes down muscular in one punch, literally one attack, and muscular is completely down for the count. And he takes Muscular over into custody. Uh, I really like that. I really liked how they show off how much stronger Deku has gotten. How much more in control he is with uh, with One for All. I also like how they allow him to use another uh, one of the quirks that he has available now. Which was, I think it's called Smokescreen. Uh, obviously he still doesn't have full control over it. And they even point that out in the episode. But he's... Able to use another one of their quirks now, so that's really cool. There's still two other, uh, you know, uh, previous wielders vestiges that he can't get access to their quirks, uh, but they're about to happen. And I think the next episode, uh, when uh, Lady Nagat ends up showing up for the first time, or not the first time because we saw her already when they were breaking out of Tartarus, but now she's actually going to make a full-on appearance. So that should be fun, because uh, I've already said this before in a previous video, but I think Lady Nagat's design is really cool, and I think she's going to be like the first like villain character that I actually find really interesting, just because I just think that she looks really cool, right? Like, I saw her design, and I was like, yeah, that's a cool-ass villain, right? Like, I saw her for the first time, like, a couple of months ago without knowing that she was actually one of the villains, and I thought she was another hero character, and I was like, wow, she looks really cool. Then I found out she was a villain, and I liked her even more. You know, I, I think she just has a really great design, and I think that's that's a first for me personally in terms of like a villain character design. Because in my opinion, most of the villains don't really look all that cool. Uh, besides like Dobby, Shigaraki could sometimes look kind of cool, uh, but that's about it. It's mainly it's mainly Dobby who I think looks really cool. But uh, Lady Nagata has a really amazing design, and I'm uh, I think Korko she did a really good job on designing her. Um, and we're finally going to be able to see what she is capable of in the next episode. And that's pretty much where I, where I uh, stopped at when I was reading the manga, reading ahead in the manga. Lady Nagat showed up. She was making her assassination attempt on uh, Midoriya because obviously she's working for uh, all for one. And that's where I stopped. So I have no idea what's going to pretty much happen up until this point, basically. I have no idea what to expect uh i don't know if i'm gonna read ahead further into the manga uh it's not really that important but eh, maybe <clears throat> maybe i'll do it but maybe i won't uh anyways that's kind of it i don't really have much else to say about the episode i really liked it i liked uh you know small moments like how uh deku talked to uh gran torino and explained uh the meeting that he had with the previous wielders and how uh nanashimura even after death is still crying and uh he hands deku his uh the remaining like cape that he the that he would wear with his hero costume i like how midoriya uh wears that with his hero costume now in order to honor him because obviously Gran torino isn't going to be able to do any hero work anymore uh yeah and i just really thought this episode was super solid uh the action was good uh yeah i really liked this episode it was really cool but uh that's all i have to say i don't have i don't have much else to add on i just think that this episode showed a lot for midoriya and his character development and how where he is now and where he's gonna end up going in the future and uh, i also think there's gonna be a particular character who's gonna end up showing up next week uh in the next episode but i'm not gonna point them out until it actually ends up happening if it ends up happening at all 
because uh, I kind of want to talk about them a little bit. Not a whole lot. It's not going to take up like a whole video, just a little bit. But uh, that's basically it. On a, I don't have much else to say. Uh, I hope you enjoyed though, uh, and let me know what you were, what your, uh, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments. I'm stumbling on my words. I apologize. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic day. I'm out. Peace. Let the